One thing is certain, Phil Dick's insights into the flexible nature of reality are prophetic. He envisions a device that would allow people to enter an utterly convincing but entirely simulated world. The empty box in New Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is an early example of virtual reality. When Phil Dick wrote Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, there was no such thing as virtual reality, and the term itself did not exist. And so, uh, for Phil Dick writing in the late 60s, he was talking about, well, what if the TV is taking over our lives? Dick's concepts may have seemed outlandish at the time, but today, they are as close as your video screen. We're already starting to blur the line between virtual reality and real reality. At the University of California, San Diego, Thomas DeFonte has designed a room that takes virtual reality to the next level, the Star Cave. The Star Cave is a place that scientists, medical professionals, artists, people from many different walks of life come to see their 3D imagery and to be inside of it. The Star Cave is the type of room that you walk into that has rear projected walls so that every surface is an image. When you walk in the Star Cave, you put on a hat that's got silver balls on it. This allows the cameras that are putting out infrared light to track where you are. Then you use a wand in your hand to essentially control to drive around just like you use a game controller. The Star Cave is more than a stunning visual experience. There are practical applications as well. We can display objects that can't be seen in reality and that are very hard to imagine, for instance, protein structures. And visualizing those things in virtual reality is very valuable because it can give scientists a completely new understanding that they can't otherwise get from just looking at images, for instance. Recently, engineers of San Francisco's Bay Bridge employed the Star Cave to examine their designs in ways that were unimaginable before. It allows them to find errors in the models early on, which can then save them millions of dollars. For them, it doesn't matter that this is the Star Cave. It could be the real world, it could be another virtual environment. For them, what matters is that they, they get to see what only their minds can show them otherwise. In a few years, we're going to have environments that are much more realistic yet, where we feel the, the objects that we actually touch, and maybe the temperature, maybe the texture, at some point, the user who uses these systems is going to be unable to distinguish between the virtual environment and the real world. Could virtual reality ever become too real? Philip K. Dick imagines technology being used to fool people. He also sees the potential that virtual reality might become an unhealthy escape from daily life. I think Ben, certainly uh, Dick took that up. And, and that's where we are today. We're completely obsessed by cyber experience. We're already seeing that children can be drawn into virtual reality and made addicts. As technology catches up with Philip K. Dick's vision, it's tempting to think how the writer might react to our progress. I think Philip K. Dick, part of his legacy is, frankly, a warning that it's very easy to lose yourself when the technology around you is becoming so ubiquitous. And there's an interesting um, debate that goes on in a lot of his work. Uh, where would you rather be? Would you rather be in the here and now? Or would you rather be in a potential fantasy of yours? And is the fantasy sometimes, frankly, better than knowing the reality? Dick knows that when technology invades the mind, even our own thoughts are no escape. In the 21st century, Dick's paranoia is transforming reality.